isn't the Coast Guard dealing with this? Harbour Master wanted you down here. <laughs> Crew were out fishing. Found the body tangled up in a trawler net. So where is the Harbour Master? Frank McAfee says he can ID the body. Well, that saves us a job, at least. DCI Vera Stan Hope, now this is your patch. Now, that's right. Uh, the skipper, he called in the office before he came into port. It's this way. You told DS Healy you know who this fella is? Hi, Tommy Stonel. His family owns one of the trawlers here. They've got two lads, Steve and Lee, that are out at sea now. And was this Tommy out with them? No. Well, he's been missing for a few weeks. Well, you lot have been looking for him. But that's why I thought you should be here. I'm going to miss him persons. The boys have been informed. Boots heading back in now. Right. OK, we'll take it from here. Right. The skipper isn't happy, Mum. He wants to unload that catch. Well, tell him they just have to wait. Listen, they get paid for their share of the catch, which at the moment is rotting in that hold. There's six days at sea, tired, hungry, Stinging a fish. All right. Kenny, Mom. just get statements and we're going to let you go home as soon as we can, all right? Yeah, it's fine, good. Marcus? done before this catch terms they're worried they'll lose out I don't intend on staying down here for long let's put it that way I hate the smell of fish was he found like this no they cut him out from the nets and then they wrapped him in this tarpaulin we know he's local fisherman fell overboard ah, someone would have called it in how long's he been dead the epidermis is still tight got rigor mortis in the jaw and the neck I guess around 24 hours before he was pulled out of the sea. So, what? Saturday night into Sunday? Cause of death? Well, I'm thinking drowning, hypothermia. Only the harbour master thinks there might be something suspicious. Maybe suicide, he isn't wearing shoes. Well, they could have come off in the current. What's this head wound? She's been pretty rough. Torso could have been bashed on the rocks, dragged along the seabed. There's no broken bones from what I can see, but the PM will tell us more. He's going to degrade pretty quickly now he's out of the water. Well, you better get him backed up then. Sooner the better. Get yourself a shower. So what do we know? Disappeared six weeks ago. Family gave a statement, said he had a bit of a breakdown. Missing persons case is ongoing, but no leads to speak of. So missing six weeks, dead 24 hours. Where was he in the meantime? was officially missing. You filed a report, what, six weeks ago? We'd been out at sea. Four days over the bank. Just came back to find out it disappeared. No warning. Not a word to anyone. It was Frank who told us he was missing. What, the harbour master? We left it a couple of days then. Called the police. And how was your dad? 
in himself before he went missing. We've barely seen him. And why was that, love? We lost our mum three years ago. Cancer. Things just got on top of him, you know. Drinking a fair bit. The house was repossessed, got behind on the payments. He wasn't working then. They haven't been out on the boat this past year. So where was your dad living if the house had been repossessed? He'd stared at me hands for a bit. Then he'd been dossing down here. They offer you a bed if you need it. I'll talk to the chaplain, see what he's got to say. So, uh, why did neither of you put him up? He said he didn't want to be a burden. He was proud, you know. Where were the pair of you on Saturday night into Sunday morning? At home. Uh, Lee and I had a few beers. I did the accounts. I wanted the bills paid before we went back to sea. Only we think your dad could have been dead for 24 hours when they found him. So where'd it been all this time? Well, that's what I'm going to find out. Jack told me. I'm Anna Marshbrook. I'm, I'm family. Do you know how it happened? No, there'll be a post-mortem. just can't believe it. Frank's suggesting a, a, a book of condolence so people can pay their respects. It's a bit late for that. What are we doing here? For now. Tommy was my brother-in-law, married to my sister. Him and my husband used to run the trawler together. And where will we find your husband? Well, you wouldn't. We lost him in 93. Uh, what happened to him? So he took him. Tommy tried to save him, but, well, he couldn't reach him. The swell was too strong. Well, that's a brave thing to have done. Yes, well. He was a different man back then. Look, I'm sorry you're having to see this pet. No, it's... It's all right. I think it was losing my sister that did from... She was the rock. After she died, well, we all did what we could, but... The lads were shattered. Where's the justice in this, eh? Losing a mum and dad in three years. All right, man. This is my son, Jack. Didn't I see you on the trawler? Yeah, first mate. He's out every hour God sends. They're at sea more than at home, this lot. And where's home? St Mary's Island. Oh, very nice. Quiet. That's how she likes it. And Tommy stayed with you for a while, is that right? For a while, yeah. But then he up sticks. I don't know where he went. Do you think Tommy could have been suicidal? Well, if you'd asked me that a year ago, I would have given you a no. You know, he was a fighter. He got knocked, he got back up again. I think what might have tipped him over is the fire. Fire's that? Well, there was a blaze at Connacht. Fish market. 18 months back. It was the October. The police never pressed charges. Yeah, but well, what's the fire got to do with Tommy? There were these rumours that he'd started at... It was the gossip that got to him the most. People he'd known all his life believing he could do a thing like that. There's no proof he did it. Nothing. Connacht's were just looking for someone to blame. He was just an easy target. Who, Who are these Connacht's? Brother and sister, Ellie and Jay. It's 52, 54, 
I would say cause of death was a fractured skull, but no fractures to the arms or legs. Mm. Didn't fall from any height, then? No. Nothing that tells us how he ended up in the water. Early signs of decomposition around the fingers and the toes. Mm. And they found food in his stomach and small intestine. Partially digested, so confirms time of death. Saturday night? Early Sunday morning. What about his tox screen? Minimal traces of alcohol in his blood. Well, not enough to say he was drunk anyway. Although his tolerance for the booze would have been pretty high. Uh, cirrhosis of the liver and thread veins. Seasoned drinker. A troubled soul by all accounts. Key thing is, no water in the lungs, no salt in the blood. So dead before he hit the water? Yes, and I'd say it's a suspicious death. Don't look so pleased. Tommy Stonnell, pulled out of the North Sea. He died of a cracked head, we think the result of an assault, sometime over the weekend. Now, Aidan, what do we know about him? Trawler man for the last 30 years, currently not working due to some kind of breakdown. Was reported missing six weeks ago, whereabouts still unknown. His oldest son, Steve Stonnell, he runs the business. Decent skipper by all accounts. What about the other son? Lee, was it? Yeah, a bit of a jack the lad is the impression I'm getting. Helps out on the boat when he feels like it. There's also a cousin, first mate, Jack Marshbrook. Are we treating the family as potential suspects, then? Well, no one's ruled in, no one's ruled out. Now, what do we know about this fire at the fish market? Yeah, suspected arson, October 2014. One fatality. There was a fatality? Market owner, Joe Connock. Now, Tommy was questioned at the time, but the case was dropped due to a lack of evidence. Why was he in the frame? From reading the report, I'd say it's inconclusive. This bloke who died in the fire, his son, Jay, was convinced that Tommy was responsible. It, bad blood between the families, going back, pff, don't easy us. But nothing substantial? No DNA? Trace of accelerant? No. So just gossip? Hmm? Well, it could be relevant. Might not be. But it still doesn't explain where he's been for the last six weeks. Now, is there anything else we need to know? Hmm? Kenny, anything special at the weekend? Oh, not as far as we can see, ma'am. There was a benefit on the Friday night. Uh, fisherman's fundraiser down on the quay. So a lot of fishing folk would have been there? Uh, yeah, but nobody seems to have seen him. Now, if this was an assault, someone came across him. Right, mobile phones, bank statements, vehicle checks. And number one question, where's been his hidey hole? And just because missing person drew a blank doesn't mean we have to. Now, Hisham, I want you to get down to the harbour. First thing, routine questions. And now, listen, it's an unexplained death. Have you got that? Mum. In a place full of gossip mongers, we don't want to stoke it. Not when it's one of their own. So, PC board and take your own mate for a little chat. Okay, I appreciate your time. All right, thanks a lot. That's great. What are you talking to these lot for? We're asking everyone, that's how we work. I bet these lot are from abroad, they won't know nothing. Well, you never know what people notice. It helps spread the net. You're taking the piss? No. No, I'm just saying we know what we're doing, okay? Trust us. If you don't know what's it, then a autopsy. Yeah, right. Of course. What it's here? I can't tell you. What do you mean you can't? It's me dad. Yeah, but I'm afraid I can't comment. Just for now. What did you find? What is it that you're covering up? There's no cover up. We're just... Someone kill him. Is that it? We are keeping all possibilities open. Aye, that's it though, isn't it? You've not even bothered to tell us. No, I've only had two hours, Kip. Colic. Well, fizzy drink will shift that. Not me, the baby. Mm. Came me up all night. Well, talk to the fishermen movements on Saturday night, then meet me in the fish market. <laughs> Get yourself a coffee.
You're the detective in charge, aren't you? I am, yes. Are the stonos going out this week? Are you a skipper? Aye. Which is your boat, then? Sunbeam. The big one. Michael Quinn. Was Tommy a friend of yours? No, I wouldn't say that. We worked the same route for 20 years, but not together. I know him from round here. So what was your impression of him? He's been down his luck for the past few years. And again, show me a fisherman that hasn't been at some point. He's getting cutthroat out there, detective. Blame Brussels or the ozone layer. What have you? Survival of the fittest day. Is that the feeling? Afraid so. To be honest, I think he lost his bottom after his wife died. Kind of lost his edge. It's understandable. What about this accusation of arson? Do you know about that? Aye. It's total bull. I wouldn't believe any of the rumours you hear around here. You want to get that lot delivered, Pet, while it's still fresh? Mr. Connock? All oh, right, my turn, is it? I hear Tommy wasn't exactly on your Christmas card list. Yeah, I won't be shedding any tears for it that way. Why do you think Tommy started the fire? I just know he did it. Sure as you're stood there. Yeah, but why? What do you know that we didn't find? Hmm? All I know is he got away with murder. And that's enough. But I've said me peace. Actually, I'm glad he's gone. Is that what you came for? Mr. Connor, can I ask you? Where were you on Saturday? Afternoon, here. Evening, we had a fundraising benefit. Why? Jay! Oh, I'm having none of that. Get out of my way. I'm not going anywhere, son. It's between me and him. This had nothing to do with us. Yeah, right. Put down the knife. Make you feel better, will it? After a long spell inside, because that's where you'll be going if you so much as touch him with that knife. You didn't even tell us he'd been murdered. I don't know how your dad died. So what are you talking to him for, then? But this isn't the answer, is it? This won't bring him back. But I will find you the answer if you just give me the space I need to do my job. OK? And that's a promise. This isn't your fight, son. Put the knife down. Come on, just put it on the floor. That's it. Let me take him home. Please. I'm sorry, I can't overlook an incident with a weapon. I promise you, I'll keep an eye on him. He's not himself. He's not slept for 24 hours. All right. I'll put this down to mitigating circumstances. Now get him out of my sight before I change my mind. Go and wait in the car. Just leave it, Lee! Is he right, though? What? Was that murdered? We don't know. So why are you talking to Connick? Because clearly he's a person of interest. Now, please, take your brother home and leave this to us. I won't ask you again. Uh, 
It's my fault. He got me in a corner. Oh, outwitted by a bereaved relative. That's very impressive. Now, can I trust you to take care of that? Wow. I could have gone nasty. Well, let's keep a uniform presence down here. Mr. Connick says he wants to press charges. Oh, fantastic. That's all we need. Understand you want to press charges. Yeah. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Do you see what we've had to deal with? Listen, the lad's just lost his dad. He's angry. We lost our dad. You don't see us running around weaving knives. Hmm. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about that? Well, two sudden deaths in two years. Small locality. What do you want to know? Just start at the beginning, eh? Phone call, middle of the night. Police say and get down the harbour. I reckon you could have seen the smoke a mile out at sea. Flames through the roof. There was nothing doing, was there? All we could do was stand there and watch it burn. Didn't even cross our minds that he could have been in there. Don't know whether he tried to tackle it. We or... didn't find his body for three days. Still, just look at this place. You've done good to pick up the pieces. Uh, she's the one who's done it. It's always the women sort things out round here. What makes you so sure Tommy started it? Him and Dad had a huge fallout just before. Vicious it was. He said, Tommy said me Dad had been fixing prices. And was he? No, Tommy let the business slide after his wife died. Blamed everybody but himself for his problems. Spent most of his time getting pissed in the pub. You all fell in line with it, though, didn't they? Just wanted to put it all behind us. Can anybody vouch for you at the benefit on Saturday night? Every trawlerman that wasn't out at sea. We had a look until two. She was there and all. I left around 11. Went home. Early start. OK. Now, if Lee Stonewall shows his face again... He won't. He's all talk, that one. Seems as though they were all on the uppers. Oh, they're fighting to survive. Start turning on each other. Right, now what about Tommy's phone logs? Anything? Nothing so far. I'll get on to the station. Give him a kick up the arse. It's up here, Darcy. I heard about the fight. Ah, I never came to that. Well, when I saw Tommy's body, I knew there would be trouble. Was it foul play? Uh, now, you know better than to ask me that. Did Tommy ever confide in you about his troubles? Well, I knew he was ashamed uh, where he'd ended up. Uh, his heart was out at sea. A champion skipper. Mm. Yeah. He did with Dad, too. Once. Not the bad thought that some people made him out to be. Was there anyone else out to get him, apart from Jay Connor? <sighs> Can't think of anybody who wanted him dead. OK, thanks. Mom? Tommy's mobile was a pay-as-you-go number. I hadn't used it in a while. Well, has anyone called it? It just rings out. happen to know where Tommy went those missing weeks. I'm sure I can't be of more help. Do you know where they hauled him in? Oh, yes. All the trawlers have got GPS, so you can pinpoint the exact position of the boat. Oh, right. So how far would the body have drifted? Well, he, he'd been dead, what, uh, 24 hours? Oh, give or take. Well, then the current would have taken him down the coast, say, uh, a couple of miles. So if we work backwards, could you show me on your chart? Oh, I could do better than that. If you fancy a boat trip, you can see for yourself. You know you contravene in health and safety. Aye, probably. Here. I'll keep you informed.
Yeah. Now, this is where they found him. You feel it, huh? Aye. The tide. How strong it is. Rip current. Aye. It comes straight off the coast there. Catch you by surprise if you're not careful. You lose your engine, you're swept out to sea. Where's the nearest headland? Life Point. That's pretty secluded. Has a stretch of beach at low tide. Can you get us up close there? Drop me off. Aye. Yeah. Season's waiting for you. What took you so long? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's the old banger that I'm driving. Got some officers down here for a search. Owners of these boats. Permits, more in rights the lot. Got it? Got it. DS Healy. Yeah, I need uniform down here. Anything wrong? It's a wallet. T Stunnel. Tommy. Did Tommy own a van? Is that blood? Looks like it. Get forensics down here. I think we're looking at our crime scene. Sir. Ma'am, we've cordoned off the slipway and we're just waiting for forensics. Although it might take a while to identify who owns these huts. Right, well, give him that wallet. Mm. And meanwhile, take a stroll down this road. See if you meet anyone. Talk to hikers, dog walkers. Did they see anything on Saturday night? Will do. Aiden, get your Google working. Berkeley Lane Cafe. Found a load of till receipts, and the latest one is dated Saturday. Everything OK? Yeah. Table for two? Northumberland and City Police. This man came in for about to eat. Four days ago, about 2.30 p.m. Do you recognise him? Sorry, no. I don't remember. We're busy Saturday. It's all right. If you like, you can talk to the boss. Yeah, see if he knows anything. Penny, what have you got? There's still no leads on the uh, hut owners yet. Well, have you got any good news for me? Oh, uh, the blood found in the van is definitely Tommy's. Uh, we're just waiting on DNA checks. Ma'am, you still there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Well, tell them to fast track it and get back to me. I need to know if there was anyone else in that van. Will do. I'm sorry I can't be more help, mate. I don't recognise him. Do you have any CCTV? No need for it. What's he wanted for, anyway? No, nothing. Disappeared a few days ago. Just making inquiries. And it's possible he was murdered. So it's important you think long and hard. Do you want to have another look at that pet? You know what? I, I do recognise him. 
I think he's been talking to Zara. Yeah. I think he's been in a few times. Aiden, she's legging it. There must be a reason. Well, I can't enlighten you. Can't you? How long she worked here? About six months. We're short-staffed. Tommy brought her in. Ah, you even know his name. Yeah, now I come to think of it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. He was just another regular face around here. Ran across the dual carriageway. Nearly got herself killed. Well, she must have been desperate. He ever come in here with anyone else? Always on his own. Did you speak to him on Saturday? I gave him a wave, and that was it. He hadn't been in for a few weeks. Now, has she left a handbag or anything, personal belongings? <sighs> Phone's locked. Well, this isn't much to go on. I give her a lift home one night. Fair deal B and B. It's over and see him. Oh, love. We're looking for one of your guests, Sarah Sullivan. Sarah Sullivan? Mm -hmm. What's she doing? I just need to talk to her. She in? Went out this morning as usual, I haven't seen her since. How long has she been here? Been here a few months. She claiming benefits? Most of them are in this place. Oh, looks like you're doing all right on it and all. My rooms are full, everyone's happy. Zara was working in a cafe. Did a runner when we questioned her. On the fiddle, is she? Oh, we've got bigger things to worry about. Like I said, playing the system. They want to take the chances, that's their lookout. Here, hold on. Do you know this fella? That's Tommy. Got a room at the back first floor. He lives here? Moved in about six weeks ago. Solomon will show her face. Now she knows we're on the way. I bloody hope so. That kid of hers will be wanting his tea. Oh, Do it all on me only. I 
Hello, baby. What's this? Yes. Hello, love. When I saw you at the cafe, I panicked. If they found out I was working, they would take away my benefits. Oh, that's a bit of a risk. I needed the money. Tommy Stonnell, you told me you didn't know him. I don't, not really. He lives here in this hostel. He got you that job at the cafe. One of the girls said he could help. Well, that's good of him. He knew the manager. They were looking for staff. I don't know. I saw him once in a while in the cafe. I tried my best to avoid him. Where's that then? Not in front of my son. Can he play whilst we talk? Please. You were saying? He liked to drink. Plenty of them do in here. This isn't good for Emmanuel. Do you know if Tommy was working? We know he drove a van. Who knows what he was involved in? What, you didn't ask about his work, background, family? You don't ask those kinds of questions. Like I said, I barely knew him. Do you know if he had any visitors? I heard him arguing with someone. One night last week. Who was he arguing with? I just heard raised voices. I was walking past his room. A man. He was angry. What were they arguing about? It's none of my business. Keep to ourselves in this place, it's easier that way. Are you going to report to me? <laughs> That's not my department, love. But you have a care. Not everyone is quite so understanding. home to go to? I'm just off. I've got some information on that van. It was bought second-hand from a dealer in Sunderland. Sold to a business. Michael Quinn's Fisheries. Seems it was never registered. Michael Quinn? Yes. Questioned him yesterday. Uh, he's one of the skippers from the harbour. He's got the big trawler. Yeah, I know who he is. Bit mouthy. Thinks he's the big man. Is it enough to bring him in for questioning? Well, let's see. He's taken an interest in the case. Knows the coastline at the back of his hand. His van has our victim's blood on it. What do you think? Yes, get him in. Well done. Isham, on second thoughts, get Kenny and Aidan back in. I think there's a better way to tackle our Mr. Quinn. Would you call yourself a sweet man or a savoury man? Sweet. Well, well I am tonight anyway. Any anything? Uh, nothing to report yet, Mum. If Tommy was bringing in contraband, he could have got himself involved with the wrong people. Well, if he was, he's already involved with the wrong people. I explain why he disappeared. Hmm. That might come back. He wants to see his kids? No, he didn't try to contact them. Maybe he didn't get the chance. Just come in. Draw our approach in the harbour. We've got a van on the quay, 
We can see it. Hello. Didn't expect to see you here. Moonlight, are we? I'm just picking up a catch. Ah, <gasps> uh, Mr. Quinn. I have here a warrant to search your vessel. On what grounds? What's all this about? Come on, this is ridiculous. I've got to get this stuff up top. Yeah, well, try not to keep you too long, Mr. Quinn. Check down there. We done here. Lift this up. Lift that up. Please. down. from we'll find out soon enough i didn't even know they were on the boat ah slipped aboard while your back was turned did they you must have had contacts hmm? slick operation i don't know what you're talking about human trafficking does that spell it out for you look i brought in some dodgy fags we're smuggling people not in a million years Let's see what Lee has to say. Recognise his vehicle? No, I can't say I do. We think Tommy Stoner was driving it. Oh, it's got nothing to do with me. Oh, that's funny. It was bought by your company. I sold the van to Tommy a couple of months ago. He said he needed wheels. Now, that's a lie. Tommy was skint. It's not even worth the money for scrap. I think Tommy was driving it for you. These nighttime cruises you've been running. I think he was taking those poor buggers to wherever it was you wanted him left. You can think whatever you like. Oh, we found the van yesterday, by the way. Up at Blythe Point. It's got Tommy's blood on it. So we do have a connection to you. Where were you Saturday night? I was at home with the missus. Ring her, she'll tell you. That's another lie. GPS record of your trawler's movements. You were at sea. You hadn't logged the trip, so I'm guessing you weren't fishing. I 
I was at sea. We picked up in Holland, but I wasn't dumping a body. You told me you thought Tommy had lost his bottle. What did you mean by that? Aye, he'd lost the plot recently. Everybody knew it. Did he know you were bringing in this consignment? I haven't seen or heard from Tommy for weeks. He used to drive for us, but then he packed it in. He said he'd had enough. Why would I kill him? If he threatened to spill the beans, that might ruin a nice little earner. I've done a lot of things I'm not proud of in my life. But I'm not a killer. I've been telling you. Enough. We never harmed anyone. Aye, that's what he said and all. Worth the risk, was it? Fourteen years inside. How long have you been doing it? A few months. I just pick them up, that's all. I drop them where I'm told to. A who? Who tells you where to take them? Quinn. I don't know who runs it. I just dealt with Quinn. And what about your dad? Quit. Out the blue. And Quinn asked me to jump in, you know, a few weeks later. I didn't see the harm. Look, what am I charged with? That van your dad drives belongs to Quinn. He said he sold it to him. So? We found your dad's blood on the vehicle, up at Blythe Point. We're questioning Quinn as a murder suspect. Couldn't have. Mm -hmm. It was with me best part of the night. You were both together. Well, you don't think I wouldn't harm me, Dad. The night your dad died. Take me through your movements from the time you got in, and I know you got back in in the early hours. I drove the van to the drop-off point, a warehouse near Rotham Colliery. I came back home. Two. Steve's been staying at his a while, keeping him company now since he split from his wife. Mm. And what time was that? Early hours, four-ish. Can he vouch for you? He's in bed. Well, did you see him? Did you check? Why would I? So when did you last see your brother that day? Around lunchtime. What is this about? Only he told us he was with you on Saturday night. Forensics have checked Quinn's trawler. No evidence to place Tommy there. It's got to be connected to the smuggling, hasn't it? I mean, if it's not Quinn, then it must be somebody higher up the chain. Mum, you want to see this? Steve Stonell's car. It flagged up when you asked us to run the place. Taken out of car park in the city centre. 7.23 p.m. The night his dad died. Right side of the screen. Well, who is that fella? We're still trying to track him down. Oh, not happy. Can you play that again? Right, stop. Stop. Now zoom in. Now let me brighten it up. Whoever he is, he's certainly got it in for Steve Stonnell, hasn't he? Now, the question is, who is this fella? Is he an angry fisherman? One of Quinn's drivers? Middleman? What? I followed the footage down the street. He goes into a hairdresser's on River Street. And where does Steve go next? Car goes on the corner of Faith Street. No photos, but I think it stays parked until the ticket's paid later that night. Do we see him come out of the car park? No. So is he in the car all that time? 
hiding from this fella, maybe? Yeah, hang on, hang on. This could just be a random punch-up over a parking spot. Doesn't mean it's related to the dad's death, does it? Yeah, but he told us he was home all night doing the accounts with his brother, didn't he? I mean, this is a funny thing to slip your mind, isn't it? Hello. Hello, love. Do you see idea of stand hope? No. I'm looking for this fella. Do you know him? Just a second. Can I help? I think possibly you can. We're investigating an incident on Saturday night. Can you confirm that that is you? Hang on, this isn't fair. He was protecting me. So this is you in the photograph? Yes, but we're the victims here. Steve's the one you should be going after. So you know Steve Stonnell? Of course I do. I'm Karen. I'm his wife. We're just going to wait. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's important. Oh, smells lovely. We're doing the end. Fish and chips. Making me feel hungry. No, you're not allowed to speak to us without me brief. Hey, it's not you I want. No, it's Steve. I need to talk to you again about the night your dad died. Why? Well, the fight. In town? What fight in town? I've been talking to your ex-wife, Karen. Come and do this outside. I wasn't stalking. I just wanted to be, like, near her. But you've seen him. He's a waste of space. I think you're best off just leaving her alone, mate. What happened after the altercation? I drove off. I went out on the air. With anyone? No one. So we've only got your word for it. I got chucked out of the feathers on Marshall Street. They'll vouch for us. Now, you must have known about the trafficking. Why didn't you tell us? It's my kid brother. I did warn him. We don't need the money that badly. Well, that's why your dad did it, isn't it? I suppose. I don't know. So what changed? Mm hmm? What happened to make him want to chuck it all in, vanish the way he did? In the weeks leading up to him disappearing, he became obsessed about how messed up the world was. You know, like reading the papers, watching the news all the time, going on about it. I tried to ask him about the board, but... He just seemed to care more about that than any of us. I know about Tommy already. It's <laughs> nice. But with the greatest respect, love, I think you're spinning me a load of absolute claptrap. I think you met Tommy in an entirely different way. And unless you start telling me the truth, my blind eye to your circumstances might become a little less forgiven. We know Quinn was bringing people into the country. And I think you met Tommy when he drove you from wherever you landed. I'm from Paris. 
I'm a EU citizen. Oh, well, that's good. Because you'll understand obstructing a police inquiry is a criminal offence. Okay. He drove us in. What with? 5,000 packets of facts? No. Fish. Frozen dead, they didn't care. Well, that's why they make it a crime, love. To stop people being carted like cattle. If you had a claim, there are legitimate ways in. They are the criminals, not me. They are the ones making money. Our clothes were wet. They were shouting at us, pushing us like animals, and I had to pay for that. And was Tommy part of this? Yes, no. Yes. But he was different. He had a jacket. They're not supposed to help in case they are asked. He gave us the jacket, made sure we were safe, and came back to visit us. That's how he ended up at the hostel. Did he give you money? No. We had no money. Was he in love with you, pet? He said so, but he didn't mean it. You said you heard raised voices coming from Tommy's room. Was that the truth? Tommy never had visitors. When did you last see him? That Saturday at the cafe. Did he ever mention he might be moving on from the hostel? No. I said I was leaving. I can't afford the rent. Everything I earn is to pay for that debt. And how did Tommy react to that? He said he was going to put everything right at home, then come back. What do you mean by that? I don't know. He just seemed like there was a relief. You know? On the brink of sorting his life out, someone decides to kill him. Sad, that, isn't it? Just when he was getting his act together. She said he was going to sort things out at home. What's that mean? Hmm? Coming up to your stop. Get yourself some kip. Yeah, start my next shift, more like. Oh, well, that reminds me. Hold on. For the bairn. Go on. How long has he been back there? A water baby. It's two months. Oh, two months then. Go on. Thanks. Enjoy your night shift. I'll drink your health, shall I? Exactly, ladies' night, is it? Nah. <laughs> Would you like a crisp? Yeah. We've arrested Michael Quinn. I heard. Did you know what he was up to? I had my suspicions. Mm. But you kept your suspicions to yourself. I've known most of these lads around here, but since they were kids, I suppose I just turned a blind eye. Nah, well, you won't be the first. I wanted to give people the benefit of the doubt. Am I going to be investigated? Oh, hard to say. You given anyone else the benefit of the doubt? Regarding Tommy, I mean. I don't want to get people into trouble. Look, I sometimes receive information that gets people out of trouble. Do you? So why don't you tell me what you know and let me decide what to make of it? On the night of the benefit, I saw Ellie Connock on a slip road. And let's put it this way, she was not pointing in the direction of her home. 
Well, where was she heading? You know that place I took you to the other day? Blythe Point. Blythe Point. OK, yeah, that's useful. Thanks. I just don't want to make it worse for the Connocks. No. They've had a harder time than most. It's just that desperate people, they do desperate things. Find anything on Ellie's car? Yeah, she passed through the camera near Blythe Point around 10 on the night that Tommy died. She didn't pass back again until nearly a day later. Great. So she might have seen our Tommy before he went off on his late night mm. trip. What's going on here? Bailiffs? Oh, clearly not raking it in then. No. Mr. Connock? I need to speak to your sister. Is she around? I, I don't know. I, I can't get hold of her anywhere. Well, I do need to talk to her. Ellie, right, call me as soon as you can, right? It's urgent. When did this all kick off? Uh, last week sometime. When last week? Before Tommy Stonnell was found? Aye, before. Now, what time did your sister go out? Oh, about an hour ago. Look, we've... We've got nothing to do with his death! Yeah, she's here. Kenny looks like she's done a disappearing act, so let's get her photo through the uniform. I will do, ma'am. There's been a fire on a cobble at Blythe Point. Belongs to Jack Marsbrook. What? Jack? He's got a boat moored at Blythe Point. Apparently so. Well, none of the family mentioned that little nugget. Oh. Right, Kenny, photos. Come on. How long you had it? About eight or nine years. Yours, is it? No, it's not mine, it's my mum's. Where is she? She went swimming first thing. She wouldn't have come past this way. Well, where does she swim? I don't know. Whitley, probably. I left her a message. Ah, uh, no, you've had a bit of a shock to the system. Now, my officer here, she'll take you back up home. Now, if there's anything to update you on, I'll do it myself, all right? OK. Any sign of any bodies? No, nothing. What happened? Did the fuel go up? No, it's unclear. There are traces of blood on the keel. Well, quick as you can with forensics on that. Who else has access to it? No one, as far as I know. Just Jack and his mum. Where are the keys to the boat stored? In that hut with the yellow windows. So potentially anybody could walk in and get them. That's theirs and all, is it?
you found out? There's no update as such, I'm yeah. afraid. Can we come in, love? Just our families. Oh, I know. Romeo and Juliet of the fishing world. We've seen each other, so what? So what? Well, Ellie here was caught driving on the road to Blythe Point, 10 p.m. the night that Tommy was killed. And? And Blythe Point is where we believe his body entered the water. Uniform have located the mother. Oh, how she take it? In shock, apparently. Not surprised that water's 15 degrees. Right. So, do you admit you lied about your whereabouts this weekend? Yes, but that was because I was with Jack. Oh, the Stonnells don't approve of outsiders, eh? Something like that. Doesn't mean it got anything to do with Tommy, though. Ah, but you lied about your alibi. You've connections with the scene. Yeah, but I've no reason to kill him. Oh, I thought you blamed Tommy for your dad's death. So it could have been revenge. Or you don't blame Tommy because you know the truth. Well, it looks like the fish market was in financial trouble long before Tommy started kicking off. Payday loans. Credit cards maxed out, remortgaged to the years. So did you or your brother burn the place down? <laughs> no. See, I think you did. And I think Tommy found out that you'd implicated him. I didn't implicate Tommy. People got wind of the feud between him and Dad, and that was that. Ah, oh, but you didn't enlighten them, did you? You allowed him to be implicated, and that love destroyed his life. It was a difficult time. I just lost me dad. Did you burn down the fish market? No. And who did? Who should have a look at? Hmm? Two deaths in 18 months. You've connections to both victims. It was Dad's idea. Dad burned it down. Couldn't stop him. Right. So I'm presuming his death was not part of the plan. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. He wanted it to look like he'd had a go at tackling it. Well, I begged him not to. But he was desperate. Hmm? Lost a fortune, heavily in debt. I know it was wrong. <sighs> but not so wrong as you told the truth. Believe me, I've paid. Did Jack know it was your dad? No. Oh, please don't tell him. Now, see, I think he did know. But because of your secret romance, he kept it to himself. Let people think it was Tommy. So was Tommy going to blow the whistle? Is that why you had to get rid of him? Hmm? Burn the boat to cover what you'd done? No! Look, he loved Tommy. So, it's just a coincidence, is it? 
that Tommy's blood was found on the boat moored by your love nest. But, yes. I don't know, maybe someone's trying to implicate me. Well, how would they do that, love? When you say no one knew about you. I could have been on that. I could have slept through the whole thing. Where's my son? He's given a witness to it. Is Jack here? No. No, he's still helping us with our inquiries. Why do you think your boat was targeted? I've no idea. Have you had any fallings out lately? No. Well, you have had a bit of a time of it, though, haven't you? What with Tommy dying now, this? Aye. Comes in threes, I suppose. Yes. Well, given what I'm about to tell you, we believe your boat was used to dispose of Tommy's body. Right? By who? We think your son helped Ellie Connick. What? He can't stand the lass. <laughs> He's been having a relationship with her for the last two years. You didn't know? Well, I knew he was seeing someone on the sly. I knew he was bringing someone to the hut, but I didn't... Well, you know what lads are like? Well, we know Ellie Connock framed Tommy for the fish market fire. And we think your Jack went along with it. No. No, you're off your head, no. Anyway, we believe they used your boat to dispose of Tommy's body and then torched it to cover their tracks. Which gives me a reason to charge your son as an accessory to murder. Well, I've got news for you. I set fire to the boat. There was nothing to do with him. Well, thanks for clarifying that for me, pet. But now I'm wondering what it is you've got to hide. a perfectly serviceable cobble, hmm? Not going to be an insurance jobby, is it? Didn't even try to make it look like an accident. It was just heat at the moment. Ah, oh, a little impulse, Orson. We found Tommy's blood on the boat. And I suggest it was you who killed him. Or at the very least, help dispose of his body. And that's why you torched the boat, to destroy any evidence. All oh, right. So you really think I could kill a man? Oh, believe me, pet. Women kill men. I, I didn't kill Tommy. No. Even though I felt like it. He was trying to sell the trawler. He said he wanted to pay off a debt or something. He said uh, he said he was going to keep his share and I could split the rest with the boys. And you didn't think to mention it? Well, it never happened. Why would I tell you about something that never happened? He was supposed to go to the brokers to sign it off, but he never turned up. Yeah, all right, all right. So which broker? Oh, in town. Where? On River Street. On River Street? Where Steve's wife works. When was this? When was it? Saturday. So you knew when Steve was caught stalking his missus, he was on River Street the night his father died. And that there was every chance he'd bump into his old man 
on his way to sell off the family business. And that's why you torched the boat. To protect Steve. I promised my sister I'd look after them. But even though it makes you an accessory to murder, Did you tell Lee his dad was selling the boat? Pick up on a Lee Stonnell. Myself, Karen, and that fella. I just knew I'd lost her. He trashed my car, and then. And then you saw your dad. Okay, I see. Yeah, well, that makes sense. My dad offered me a lift back here. I thought he was pleased to see us. I thought maybe he was. You know, he's coming home. And then what? We had a good chat. Just the first time he'd seen himself in God knows how long. And then he just announces he's selling. I mean, I know it gone a bit crackers, but to give it all up for a waitress he barely knew. He said he loved her. Oh, man. He said she'd stood by him when his family hadn't. How oh, he just wanted to be happy. Anyhow, we rowed. I got out of the van. If he hadn't have followed us, I, I had no intention of... I'd just... What an unlucky punch. You pushed him, and his head hit the road. Hmm? What road was that? Course road. About half a mile inland. Ah, oh, believe me, Pat, you won't be the first with an angry left hook that goes too far. I remember the first time he took us out. Three days sailing on the cod banks. We heard there was a gale blowing, Force 9. We barely caught anything. Most of the fleet had headed back. But my dad wanted to see right by the lads. We can't go home with nothing, he said. He pointed the boat towards the storm. Sailed right into it. 
for all the nets out behind us. They tied me to the ballast so I wouldn't go overboard. <laughs> I stayed there all night, heaving and shaking, wretching. Wind was so loud you couldn't hear yourself think. But my dad, he never wavered. Dawn came, swung with it. We hauled the nets in, hundreds of turbot. We were kings. My dad split the money between the rest of the crew. I said I couldn't take my share. You've earned it, lad. You're a man now. So you're on the coast road. Your dad's on the ground. What happens next? I managed to get him in the van. Sat with him a while. Some of how long. Then I drove. Ended up in Blythe Point. Where Anna's boat is conveniently moored. What were you thinking, son? Go out to sea, dump his body, and it would all wash away. Oh. I just said my goodbyes. I didn't think anything. And then as cool as you like, you took the boat back to its mooring. If you'd have just come to us in the beginning, you'd be looking at manslaughter with mitigation. Two years. But you didn't. You took your dad's body out to sea and you dumped him. I won't say any more. I want a solicitor. You're going to need a solicitor, Pat. Families, eh? Nothing but pain and trouble. Why don't you get off home to that lovely bairn? Hmm? You've done all right for someone with no kip. That a compliment. Here's the contact you wanted. Now, he shredded me once in the courtroom, but he said he'd do it some hours. Oh, brilliant. Thanks. Nice. I'll get on to that first thing. Yeah, hang on a minute. You've had a good result. You've earned your day off in lieu. Take it. Listen to the man. You put your feet up. The thing is, unlike the rest of you lot, I don't have to answer to anyone. <laughs> I can do what I like, when I like. Uh, good night. Now, this fella is an immigration lawyer. He's the best in the area, and he's agreed to do you a favor. Thank you. I appreciate it. I know you don't have to help me. Look, none of us own any of this. When my mum's dad came over from Ireland in the 30s, he walked 40 miles before anyone gave him a job. So you make what you can of it. Thank you. <laughs> 